I know the fall has come because uh, we have these markers. I have these markers, and two of them. One of them is when the maple tree in our front yard on 50th, 50th Avenue, the leaves fell. That meant it was time to rake the leaves, and, and that was always the first weekend in November. And the other one was our youngest daughter's birthday is on October 29th, and we lit the fire, the wood stove at that point, and it was on the rest of the winter. Well, this morning the light from our sun sunroom was coming from the wood stove. So it's <laughs> the Lord has a way of reminding us that uh, let's let's move on, keep up. And, and nudging us along. So here we are. So see a few snowflakes this morning, but it's warm inside. So let's stand and uh, welcome the Lord. <clears throat> Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for, for you, Lord, and the steadfast person that you are and that uh, keeps us moving along. And even in the mid of, midst of all the changes this year, the that we can still be here in your house. And we welcome you here today, and we pray that your word may be spoken and taken into our hearts to be better witnesses for you. These things we ask in Jesus' name, we give you the praise. Amen. You may, see, may be seated. Announcements. Anybody got some announcements this morning? Pastor has an announcement. Thanksgiving service. So we've got a group of churches that we are part of, and they're all going to be participating. Um, you are welcome to come. Uh, then on the 29th of November, uh, we are going to have a baptismal service. So if anyone is interested in being baptized, if you've never been baptized and you wondered, hmm, should I get baptized? If you're a born-again Christian, you know the, the Savior, uh, and you've never been baptized, Hey, this could be your chance. We do have a baptismal tank right there. It's going to be filled with freezing cold water, and you will come out one of the frozen chosen. <laughs> no, it's heated. So. Just let me know, or one of the elders, if you are interested. Thank you, Pastor. Okay, seeing none, uh, let's have our opening song, Redeemed. I think it's supposed to be up here, as I'm told. turn our hearts towards the Lord. Uh, precious Father, uh, thank you that in heaven uh, there is a perfect peace, harmony, joy. Uh, there is no division. Uh, there's no sickness. There's no pain. Uh, there's nothing uh, that would cause any heart to be troubled. And Lord, uh, uh, you are the one 
who causes peace uh, to occur where there is chaos. And Lord, we, we want to ask that you would speak into the chaos of so many of our lives right now, Lord, uh, where we're asking uh, for things that are outside of our control, Lord. Uh, we pray that you would bring peace for whatever means uh, you want to bring it, whether there's direct healing, where we are asking for healing, uh, or whether there's indirect healing, and maybe there's other things you want to do through the process. Um, we pray, Father, that you would bring in finances for those that are in need, Lord, for those traveling, for those... Uh, uh, who are there for family members who are going through things, Lord. Uh, we pray that you would reveal yourself in a unique way in these situations. And Lord, we do pray that you would present a solution uh, through what you've done on the cross, Lord. We pray for those family members that don't know you even today. Uh, many people that don't know you, uh, Lord, they're facing an eternity uh, without you. And Lord, we pray, Father, that you would use these seasons and times to bring many uh, to Christ. Father, we want to lift into your hands uh, each of the prayer requests. Um, you heard every one of them. Um, Lord, uh, we pray, Father, that you would uh, work your amazing, amazing plan uh, through these things. And Lord, uh, we pray that you would uh, bring a good end to each situation. Lord, uh, we do pray for our country. We pray for Tuesday. Lord, uh, for anyone voting that has not yet voted, we pray, Lord, that you would help them vote according to your biblical uh, understanding. Lord, that you would speak peace into their hearts, uh, even if they don't know you, Lord, that they might get a sense of what's going on and uh, maybe start to look at the way you look at things. Uh, Father, we pray that you uh, would work a miracle. Uh, whatever it is your will is, we, Father, help us to uh, come to that same place of uh, peace that you have in heaven. Uh, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We ask this in your name. Amen. Good morning. Uh, uh, can we all stand and uh, read another scripture? Be reading John 14, uh, 15 through 17. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father... And he'll give you another helper to be you, be with you forever, even with the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you, and I will be within you. Thank you. You may be seated. All right. Thank you, Nate. All right. Okay, so word of warning. I don't have my notes, I don't have my glasses, I don't have my brain. So, let's go into this, uh, asking the Lord again to help us. <laughs> Precious Father, uh, your word is truth. Uh, you've told us in John 17, 17, and that you would sanctify us uh, by your truth. Uh, you would grow us, you would cause us to become more like you, to get to know you, and to understand how you want us to live in this dark and crazy world. Lord, thank you that your word is truth. And as we come to your word now, we pray that you would uh, fill us with your mindset, Lord. Fill us with uh, your perspective. Uh, Lord, we pray that we would leave this building, um, and those who are at home watching would leave their bathrooms or their kitchens, wherever they're watching, Lord, into a different room. Uh, but Lord, that they would leave um, being transformed and renewed in their mind. Lord, uh, we pray that you would just bless each one as we come now to your word. Uh, help us to hear from you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, it's um, kind of clear that we're living right now in times that are pretty tumultuous. I don't know how many times you've heard people say that. Uh, on and on and on and on it goes. Uh, things are heading up. Something to do with elections? I don't know what that is. Now, we're seeing a lot of disharmony, a lot of chaos, a lot of disunity. Uh, there's a lot of dis words. Um, things just seem to be spinning out of control. Uh, last three weeks of last month, November, uh, I had a couple of things actually happen along the same lines. Um, you, know, you know when something's going to go wrong? Something's going to break. Usually it comes in threes, groups of threes or fours. Uh, so the first thing that happened for us, uh, our refrigerator died. So we had to put our food in a cooler, you know, and in little bags. Uh, Leo was running around the house with some of the food, and then the dog's chasing her and grabbing more of the food. And it felt a little bit chaotic uh, until the, we, we were able to get a new refrigerator. Uh, things were kind of out of whack. We kind of felt out of sorts. Uh, then the muffler fell off of my car. <laughs> it didn't really fall off. Uh, a tree decided to make an unannounced visit and fell in front of me as I was driving in the rain. So I drove over the thing and, of course, yeah, then the muffler came off. <laughs> um, as I was driving the next couple of days until I can get a brand new one, um, again, things were a little bit chaotic. They were in disharmony. 
You know, I, you could hear me coming a long way off. <laughs> and, and I felt bad for my poor neighbors, and I thought of putting racing stripes on the side of my car, and a little sign on the top said, uh, Pastor, um, you know, on, on 24-hour call. But Laura dissuaded me to do that. Uh, but everything was a little bit out of whack again. I felt a bit out of sorts. And then, of course, the dog ate my glasses. <laughs> uh, literally. This is not me when I was a kid saying the dog ate my homework. The dog actually ate my glasses and knocked them off my head. And before I could get to her in time, she was under the couch and I heard crunch. One lens was cracked in two. The other lens, she swallowed completely. <laughs> I had to sit that dog down and say, this too shall pass. Mm. <laughs> so, so for the last couple of days, uh, I've been squinting and I've been driving with my prescription sunglasses. <laughs> Can't drive at night. So things have been a little bit out of whack again. Things will feel a little bit disharmonious. And thankfully, we are in a passage in John chapter 14. Nate just read the verses to us. Um, where we see that we have a God in heaven who's made up of three persons. He's a trinity. And there is perfect harmony. And, and he gives us the privilege of being a fourth part of that, of that uh, wonderful group. Uh, not as God himself, but just we get to enjoy being a part of his family. And we're a fourth part, and we get to enjoy harmony. And that's what we're going to look at in these verses this morning. So turn with me, if you haven't already, to John chapter 14, starting at verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may, uh, may abide with you forever, the spirit of truth. I'm going to stop right there. Uh, Nate read the whole thing to you. Now, this is the first time that Jesus is talking to his disciples, and he's mentioning the Trinity. Uh, John has alluded to the Trinity throughout the Gospel of John, but this is the first time Jesus says it directly, John chapter 14. If you have ever wondered about the Trinity and you think you understand the Trinity completely, then you are in a unique group. No one really understands the Trinity. We have these cute little uh, things like the clover and ice water steam. Um, we have analogies that we can talk about the Trinity, but nothing really comes close because we're talking about someone who is limitless. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Uh, and it's an amazing mystery, and I'm not going to try to unravel the mystery of the Trinity this morning, but I will try to unravel the ministry of the Trinity this morning. So think about it this way. All that disharmony that we're seeing right now in the world, uh, we are seeing disunity, people having difference, differences of opinion about how things should be, differences in the way our healthcare should be run, our education systems, our government, our schools. Uh, in your own family, you may have differences of opinion with others in your family about how we should be taking out the trash, <laughs> what, what things should be staying in the refrigerator longer than they should, uh, all kinds of things that we have differences of opinions with because we live in a fallen world. We live in a world that has sin in it, and we do not think with a perfect mind all the time. We're in disunity. We're disharmonious. And in Genesis 1.26, we see this incredible statement where God says, let us make humanity, man, humanity, men and women, in our own image. An interesting verse, because it says our own image. It's the first Trinitarian statement in the Bible. Uh, God is saying, it's the word Elohim in, in the Hebrew, uh, the three of us, as we discover throughout the rest of Scripture, the three of us are going to have a work project. We talked about God's worst job last week. <laughs> Part of God's worst job was to make us. It was to make us. And yet it was also his best job, his most enjoyable job. Let us make man in our own image. And so he made you and he made me. And we didn't read in the rest of the verses in Genesis 1. We don't read about the Holy Spirit saying, hold it. Can we have a revote? <laughs> Can we have a recount? We don't hear that Jesus suddenly speaks up and says, wait a minute, uh, Father, uh, that's a great idea. But you know what's going to happen. They're going to mess up. Sin's going to enter the world. Then I'm going to have to go and fix it. <laughs> you don't hear that. All you hear is this perfect harmony. Let us do the job. Let us make humanity. They are in perfect harmony over everything they do, and they always have been, and they always will be. God is perfect. God is love. 
we're told. God is love. Uh, There is no dissension in the Trinity. And Jesus is telling these disciples who are living in a moment of fear and anxiety, there's a lot of disharmony in their lives right now where they've got question marks. Hang on, Jesus has said he's going away. Uh Uh-oh, I thought he was going to come and redeem the entire nation. I thought he was going to take over the Romans, kick them out. I thought he was going to make our lives better. Now he's saying he's going away. There's a lot of question marks, a lot of disharmony, a lot of disunity. They're even arguing amongst themselves who's going to be the greatest. Uh, And Judas has just stormed out because he's been shown to be a betrayal. The the disciples are all starting to wonder, is this thing going to turn bad? And Jesus is saying, guys, I've got to go away. However, I'm going to send you someone who's going to help you. He's referring to the Holy Spirit. Now think about it this way. If you think about a musical analogy, uh, God the Father is the composer of the score. So if you think of an orchestra, uh, we have Beth at the piano here, we have uh, uh, Arion playing percussion, uh, we have different ones with violins and cellos, and, you know, and of course I'm not here singing. So if you have a four part harmony, you would have a, a quartet. Uh, you've heard some great gospel singing, I'm sure many of you have, you like the, uh, the Gaithers, uh, the Crab family, uh, many different ones, the cathedrals. Uh, they are a part of a four part harmony. Uh, and an orchestra takes it a step further. Uh, notice I didn't say a, a barbershop quartet. See, I don't have enough hair to be in a barbershop quartet. <laughs> but you have a number of people that love to sing in harmony. One person singing is great, you get a second person sing, and if they're out of tune, it sounds awful. Again, that's why I don't sing. <laughs> but you get three people together, and they all sing, it sound great together in harmony, it's awesome. God is a trinity who is always singing in harmony. He's in, he's in tune. Three persons, one God. And they've asked and they've given the opportunity for you and for I to be a part of that that singing. A spiritual song every single day. It's called eternal life. There is a harmonious element to eternal life. And if there's an orchestra uh, playing, you could say God wrote the score. So the father wrote the, the score, composed it. You could say that the son, who's the second part in this harmony, um, he is the one who plays first violin in the orchestra. So he's the one everyone's looking to, the most important part of the orchestra. The third person in this would be the Holy Spirit. He's the conductor. So everyone else in the orchestra, that would be the fourth part, you and me. We would be playing alongside. We would be taking our cues from the Holy Spirit, who's the conductor. You could look at it like that. It's not a very good analogy, but (laughs) it works. There was a man in history, uh, you would probably know his name. He wanted to be a composer, he wanted to be a pianist, and, and he did those things. In fact, he was phenomenal. He was, an ingeni- he was a genius, an incredible musician, incredible pianist. Uh, but he also wanted to be the conductor. He wanted a little bit of the limelight. And, and so he started to do conducting of large orchestras where he had composed and wrote the music, and people let him do that because of who he was. But he was terrible. He was lousy. He would jump up and down uh, at the exciting fast parts of the music score. He would crouch down low whenever there was a quiet moment and you couldn't see him very well. And if you were in the back of the orchestra, you had no idea what he was wanting you to do. There was confusion. And one day, because his hearing was getting worse, he walked towards the orchestra so he could hear what they were playing because he thought they weren't playing loud enough in the back. Tripped over the piano, knocked the candles over, knocked the choir board over, and there was pandemonium. The orchestra begged him to quit, and so Ludwig van Beethoven quit being a conductor. (laughs) And he stuck to what he was good, good at. And today, of course, we all know who he is. Beethoven, great composer, wonderful pianist, lousy conductor. I would submit that um, oftentimes in our Christian life, we want to be a conductor, and we do not take the cues from the Holy Spirit, who is the conductor. Uh, We try to ad-lib, make it up as we go along. We might even take the score sheet that the Father has written and try to rewrite it ourselves. We try to do life on our own, our way, and it never works out. And Jesus is saying to the disciples, guys, you don't have to go it alone here. There's going to be some rocky road ahead, but it's okay because I'm sending one who's going to help you. There's a conductor who's going to help you understand how the Father has composed your life. And it's going to come out as a beautiful music score. You're going to have a composition that's a melodious um, tune that everyone else can look at and go, Wow, that guy, that gal, 
They're amazing. Want to know the secret? And Jesus tells them, lean into the helper. So this is what we've got. Eternal life is being a part of a four-part harmony uh, and a wonderful composed uh, tune, a melody. So the first part, the father. If we look at his role, uh, we said he composes the score. Uh, The Bible always says that he is the provider. Uh, He is the provider. Jesus says, I will give you another helper. Verse, 15, uh, verse 16, I'm sorry. I will give you another helper. Um, the father, I'm sorry. <laughs> I wish I could read. Without these glasses, it's really hard. <laughs> the father will give you another helper. Now, the father, we're told in Deuteron- Deuteronomy 8.18, is the giver of all life. Um, Ecclesiastes 2.8, he's the, he's the one who gives wisdom. He gives joy. He's the one that will help you in all ways. He gives everything you need. Uh, We're told that uh, if the father gave up his only son, how much more will he give us all things freely? In other words, we don't have to worry about going uh, begging for food. The father will give us everything we need. The father is a wonderful provider. Uh, In Luke 11, uh, Jesus says, If you who are evil know how to give good gifts to your kids, to your children, how much more will my Father in heaven give you good gifts? And he does. He does. All the time. Uh, We have a Father who loves us deeply. And when we rest in that understanding, we discover a joy of a symphony in our hearts that no one can take away. The, The devil cannot steal it. He cannot kill it. He cannot destroy it because it was written by the Father. It was paid for by the Son. It was conducted by the Holy Spirit. And as we respond to the Holy Spirit, we experience it in our own lives. So the Father is the giver. He's the provider. The second part in this harmony, in this symphony, in this four-part harmony, uh, would be Jesus himself. And his role is intercessor. Now, notice Jesus says, I will give you... I will pray to the Father, and he will give you another helper. Uh, Your NIV might say advocate. Um, Other translations say helper. Uh, Jesus himself is an advocate. He's an intercessor. Now, you might be wondering, um, what is Jesus doing in heaven right now? He's doing, actually, what he says here. He says, I will pray to the Father. In other words, I'm going to talk to my dad about you. That marks the beginning of his ministry of intercession. After he died on the cross, ascended to heaven, sat down at the right hand of the Father in Hebrews 10.10, he sat there and he began a ministry. Now, on earth, he'd already completed a work. It's a finished work, the work of salvation. Uh, We looked at that last week. That was part of the worst job God had ever had to do. <laughs> Jesus went through that process of doing the worst job, died on the cross for you and me, and he completed it. It's a finished work. Nothing left for you or I to do to earn salvation. We can't earn it. It's a gift of grace. And Jesus did that work on our behalf. He paid it all in full. He paid for the debts of your sins and my sins. Uh, the Greek word would be teletestai. Now, in heaven, there is an unfinished work that Jesus is currently doing. It's this, it's this ministry of intercession. In other words, he's still talking to the Father about you and me. He's still talking to the Father. Uh, Romans 8.34 says that he sat down at the right hand of the Father uh, where he now makes intercession for us. That's what he's doing right now, talking to his dad about you and me. Hebrews 7.25 says that God can save you and I completely because he ever lives to make intercession forever so forever he's going to be talking to the father about you and me now you might ask yourself why does he do that now the word advocate uh, the word intercessor they're exchangeable here in the Greek Uh, that word advocate is better known as an attorney we all know what an attorney does or a defense lawyer And that is what Jesus is talking to the Father about. He is our defense lawyer. You might ask, why do I need a defense lawyer? Well, I think we all know why. (laughs) Every one of us is imperfect. We all sin. We all do things wrong. Um, 1 John 1, 9, we're told that when we do sin, and we will, uh, he is faithful. Jesus is faithful and just to 
redeem us, to cleanse us, to forgive us of all sin and of unrighteousness because of that finished work on the cross. But in the unfinished work in heaven, he is our intercessor. And there are times where we don't always realize the true nature of what he accomplished on the cross, that we are forgiven and we can stand in victory and we can walk in victory because the Bible also tells us we have an enemy. You know his name very well. Satan. I think there was a lot of people celebrating him last night. Um, the good news is he's not a winner. We know the end of the story. He lost. Once in a blue moon, like last night, we figure that out. And Satan, it says in Revelation 12, verse 10, he accuses the brethren. It doesn't say just for a couple of seconds or just whenever they do something wrong, when they mess up royally. He doesn't accuse them to the father then. But he accuses us before the Father every single day. It says day and night. And it's a, an interminable day and night. It goes on and on and on. No, what Satan is relentless. He's accusing you before the Father. And, and what's he actually saying? Is he making stuff up? He could. He's the father of all lies in John 8, 44. Uh, he could uh, be blinding you and deceiving you. Second Corinthians 4, 4. He's deceived the whole world. He's blinded people's eyes in case they come to an understanding of the glory of the gospel and get saved. Uh, but what he's actually saying to the Father is truth. So he's just pointing out what we already know about ourselves. Yeah, look at that Simon, that Simon Endicott. Look at that. Calls himself a Christian. He's even a pastor. He's one of your kids. You know how he is. You know how much he judges in his heart. You know how insecure he is. You know all that times that he does things wrong. He's a sinner. And you want to keep him in your family? And, and as the Father's listening to this, Jesus... Remember, he's the intercessor who's been praying for me. He's been talking to the Father about me. He leans over to the Father and says, wait a second, I paid for this one. His sins have been paid for. He's accepted my gift of salvation completely free. My blood has shed and covered all of his sins. Uh, in fact, look at the filing cabinet here. Pulls out the filing cabinet. Yep, pulls out the file with my name on it. Got a little squishy face there with no glasses on. Okay, opens it up, and there it is. Teletestai. Boom. Paid in full. <laughs> Everything was black and dark, but he paid for it in his blood. And the father looks at it and says, yep, you're right. Turns to Satan and says, case dismissed. And that is what Jesus is talking to the father about, you and me, every single moment. If you're a born-again Christian, that is the reality of the unfinished work in heaven. It's resting on the finished work of Christ on earth. This is the glorious reality of the gospel. So Jesus, in the second part of the symphony, he's talking to the Father, and he's going to continually talk to the Father about you. You have a defense lawyer. He's always there, and he's never going to let you down, and Satan cannot win. Hebrews, um, uh, in Daniel 7.25, he's constantly trying to wear out the saints of the Most High, trying to get us worn out, burnt out. He's trying to get us to turn our eyes away from the truth of the Scriptures. The reality of the gospel. And Jesus is constantly praying for us. Now, the third part, the role of the Holy Spirit. So if God the Father is the composer, uh, and he's the one who provides everything, if uh, Jesus is first violin in the orchestra, he's also the one who's our defense lawyer, our attorney. He makes sure that we get to stay in the orchestra and continue the symphony. It's the Holy Spirit. He is the one who is the helper He's the helper. Uh, the parakletos is the Greek word Jesus uses here. I will send you another helper. He's the one that puts gas in your tank. He's the one that empowers you. He's the one that enables you to actually perform in the orchestra of life, eternal life. You're not going to necessarily understand what the Father has composed because it's spiritually discerned. You need the help of the Holy Spirit. When we open the scriptures, we won't necessarily understand what's in this book without the help of the Holy Spirit. He's the conductor, and we take our cues from him. The Holy Spirit is a perfect gentleman who will never force you to do anything. We are in harmony, just as the Trinity have been for all eternity. He wants us to make a decision every moment to lean on him, to listen to him. And we do that for opening the scriptures, have a devotion every morning, and then start talking to God. And as you do that, the Holy Spirit goes to work. On the inside of you where he's living, the moment you get saved, he starts to talk to you. He starts to encourage you. He starts to remind you of what the scriptures are saying. And the wonderful reality is that as you go throughout your day, a symphony starts to happen. Now, 
Jesus says he's going to send another helper. We have two Greek words, and these are important. We have the word another, here is the word alos, and then we have helper, parakletos. Now, parakletos, we've said already, helper. It could be translated, one who comes alongside you. So God, the Holy Spirit, is going to come alongside you. Now, Jesus says he's another helper. Why would he say that? Well, he's talking to the disciples. The disciples are listening to this, saying, all right, so you're going away. And again, the question marks are going off in their minds. And Jesus says, guys, it's okay. I've been with you for three and a half years. Remember all the times I've done these miracles and fed you, clothed you, kept you safe. I've kept you secure. I've protected you. Uh, Romans have never touched you. None of you have been thrown in in prison. Uh, None of you have been killed. You've been with me for three and a half years. Now, those things might happen, but I will keep you safe. However, guys, I've got to go away. However, I am sending another helper to help you. And he uses this word, alos, another. He could have used the word heteros. Now, those two words mean completely different things, but they're both translated another. So let me give you an analogy so you help you understand how amazing this is. It really blessed me when I was uh, thinking through this. So if you think of, well, our friend Nate here. Okay, Nate, who just read the scriptures earlier, goes off to uh, Cabrera to buy uh, a new, brand new Yeti travel mug. Uh, he's going to go take it when he goes hunting. So it's got to be a pretty decent uh, uh, travel mug, and it is. It's actually pretty awesome, a Yeti travel mug. Uh, he gets it. It's expensive. Uh, and he gets into his truck with it, and as he gets into his truck, he realizes, oh, I got the wrong one. It's too big. It won't fit in the holder. <laughs> so... He goes back inside. He's saying to himself, I am going to get another heteros, another one, exactly the same. Nope, different. If I get exactly the same, it won't fit. So he goes over the shelves and he pulls off the shelf one that is just the right size. It's beautiful. (laughs) Goes back to the truck, puts it in, says, there it is. Well, the following day, he gets to church. He has just gotten himself another Yeti uh, travel mug. And it's perfect. He's sitting in church. And who comes along? Hmm. I think uh, our friend Mark over here, Mark Hamler. Uh, Mark sees it and says, oh, my goodness, I love that. Where'd you get that? And so they're talking away. And then suddenly, Nate says, you know, I love you, brother. Here, you have it. It's a gift. And Mark says, what? No. He says, yeah, no, take it. Well, thank you. That's very kind. And then Nate says, I'm going to go back to the store anyway. I have to get a few other things. I'm going to get another one. And except because these are two Greek scholars, they're talking Greek, you know. (laughs) Nate uses the word, not heteros, but he uses the word that Jesus uses here, alos. I'm going to get alos, another Yeti travel mug. One that's exactly the same, no different. So Jesus is saying to the disciples, I'm going to get you another helper who's exactly the same as me. Jesus says, I've been helping you all these years. Now I've got to go away, but I'm going to send someone who's going to do exactly what I've been doing, and he's not going to leave you. It says that he is with you. How long? Thank you. Forever. Forever. You have a helper who helps you just the way Jesus helped the disciples when he was on earth. The Holy Spirit is Jesus helping you every single moment. Thank you. Every single moment, Jesus is with you. Remember he said he would never leave you nor forsake you. Now through the Holy Spirit, he is with you. Now we're going to come to the last part and we're going to have communion. The fourth part in this four-part harmony is where we have been invited to participate in what God is doing in God's work here on earth. This is pretty amazing. God says... And this is pretty amazing. As the disciples are listening to this, they're going to get the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will be given to them as a gift, and he will live inside of them. He will be upon them. He will be within them. He will be with them wherever they go. And Romans 5.5 says that the love of God will be shed abroad in their hearts. Uh, In other words, the love of God will be placed inside of them through the Holy Spirit. Through the Holy Spirit. Romans 5.5. So let's... Go back to the very first verse that we we heard earlier, verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. That's a pretty tall order. If you love me, keep my commandments. This is our part. This is what we have to do, our job. 
Now, if you try to do that in your own natural strength, you try to be the conductor, or you try to compose the symphony by doing your own thing and saying you're a Christian, uh, let's force uh, what God's going to do in my life. It does not work out. We're told that God is love. In other words, there is such a thing as divine love and human love. And human love is just the same as us, limited. Eventually, it will fail. Eventually, it will become unkind. It will not have patience. It will be rude. It will be arrogant. Uh, our love only goes so far before we run out of steam. And God says, no, I want to give you something even better so that you can love me and you can love the people around you. I'm going to give you my love through the Holy Spirit. I'm going to give it to you as a gift. It's part of this package called eternal life. And while you're still here on earth, I have a job for you to do. I want you to go love on everyone you see. Just love them. Even when there's disharmony and chaos and disunity going on all around you, you're going to be the one single symphonic note of harmony in their life. I'm going to send you out amongst wolves. You're going to be the sheep of my pasture. And the good shepherd says, I'm going to lead you in the way everlasting. And you're going to have a symphony in your heart, a melody that everyone is going to see, even though you're going through the same things as them. You still have sickness. You still have trouble. You still have all kinds of problems. You still have to figure this thing out called the elections <laughs> and all the chaos that's probably going to happen after that. You're going to have to figure it out. But you have the Holy Spirit and his love inside of you. Keep my commandments. 776 commandments that the, uh, the Jews made up because uh, the Ten Commandments were not enough. That's how they figured out we could do this thing perfectly, and it still failed. And God says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, strength, mind, and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. And this is how you're going to do it. Just relax. Let the Holy Spirit fill you. Let the Holy Spirit flood you. Be filled with the spirits. Uh, walk in the Spirit, and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And as you do this, and as you go out through the rest of this week... There is a harmony that people hear. People's mufflers might fall off their cars. The dog might eat their glasses. You might hear that the fridge has died and people are complaining. But here you are. You are the solution as you just keep going through life as you are, allowing God's melody in your heart. Lean on the scriptures. Trust in the Lord. Take him at his word. Amen. Let's pray. Father, um, as we come to communion, Thank you that you are the one that produces harmony, Lord, that we don't have to react to the disharmony around us. Uh, we don't have to be a voice that adds to the disharmony. Uh, we can do many good things, yet if it's not done with love, it's just a clanging gong. Uh, we don't want to be a clanging gong as we go from this place. Uh, or for those of us who are at home watching online uh, or in their cars listening, uh, wherever we end up this week, we want to represent a symphony that's in heaven. Lord, uh, your word tells us you sing over us with joy. Help us to be singing over each other with joy. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. As we come to communion, uh, hopefully each one of you has a prepackaged cup that you picked up. If you don't, um, there are some in a basket at the back there. Now, for those of you watching online from home, take this moment, if you will, go into the kitchen, find yourself uh, something to substitute the cracker and the juice. Um, in your cars, if you need uh, a prepackaged one, uh, wave, honk your horns, do something, but we'll make sure we get something to you. In a moment, we're going to have a moment of silence, as we always do. Uh, if there is any disharmony in your life right now, where you feel like you're not really in tune with what God is doing, um, because of all the voices in the world, all of this chaos that we're hearing in the news, as the elections approach and as the elections pass, this is not going to pass. There's always going to be disharmony. God wants to bring harmony inside of you. He wants to help you. That's why he sent the helper, the Holy Spirit. There may be some things that we need to talk to the Lord Jesus about, and he's going to talk to the Father about, and then he's going to bring that peace into your heart. We're going to take a moment to just to talk to him about that. And there may be some of you watching online, or some of you uh, even here, uh, who may not even know the Lord Jesus, and you're not sure about what's going to happen when you die, and you want to know, you don't want disharmony, you don't want fear, uncertainty. Uh, the Bible says you can know for certain that you will go to heaven when you die by receiving the free gift of salvation. That is what Jesus did on the cross. That was his finished work, and he's praying for you right now. And you may want to take this moment just to talk to him about that. Ask him to save you, and he will. It's that simple. Just talk to him. So let's have a moment now. Uh, let's be quiet. Let's close our eyes.
passage of scripture that we are in, and we have been in it for some time, and we will be in it for some time more, but we will get to the end of it. It's called the Upper Room Discourse. Jesus is giving his last final words to his closest friends before he goes to the cross, Um, and he's given the Last Supper. They've all sat together, and Jesus has instituted what will be known as the Last Supper, the Communion. On this night, right before he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread, he broke it, and he gave thanks. Now before I I give you the rest of the verse, let's thank God for this this amazing um, provision that he provided, uh, his body, his blood. Uh, Bob, if you could pray for the bread, that would be great. As he took that bread, just as he would, just a few short hours later, he said this, this is my body broken for you, uh, for the forgiveness of many. Uh, Take this and eat this in remembrance of me. He then took the cup. Steve, uh, if you could pray for the cup, that would be great. So based upon the finished work on the cross, Jesus lifted the cup and he said to his disciples, uh, this is the blood of the new covenant. Uh, Drink this for the remissions of many sins. As we close... Think about this. Because of what Christ has done on the cross, because we get to celebrate that we are part of the family of God, we are part of an orchestra, a symphony. Uh, you, some of you may play instruments. Uh, Beth plays an incredible um, uh, instrument really well. Uh, and some of you may not play instruments. You may not feel like you're musical. Yet, spiritually, did you know that you are the, uh, one of the greatest prodigies that there ever was? You have the Holy Spirit living inside of you, the remarkable conductor, and he's given you the ability to respond in remarkable ways. There's this spiritual symphony that's echoing throughout the community. Wherever you go, in your family, your job, whatever it is, this symphony goes. And people whose lives are in disharmony, they catch the tune and they go, where's that coming from? And some people might be very curious about you, and they may be watching you very closely, because they're trying to figure this thing out. Keep doing what you're doing. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him. He will direct your paths, and that symphony will keep going. Amen. Um, I think we're going to sing. We're going to sing, trust and obey. Trust and obey. Let's sing.
We're going to sing this one final uh, song that we often sing, uh, Blessed Be the Ties That Bind. Uh, each one of us is part of a family. Uh, let's rejoice together. Peace of the Lord keep you. for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel by clicking the link on the upper left hand side of your screen so you can see all of our videos when they come out. Or you can watch last Sunday's sermon by clicking the video link on the bottom left of your screen. From all of us at Sylvester Community Church, thank you and God bless.